Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So tonight was a uh, pretty jam-packed episode of Impact. We had six matches, uh, five that took place at the arena, and one that was a look-in from the Defy Wrestling organization. Um, so we opened the show with uh, Jeremy Borash backstage with the six competitors in the Knockouts tournament to crown a new Knockouts champion after Gail Kim retired and relinquish her title. So apparently it's going to be broken up into two triple threat matches. Uh, the first match, which is going to happen tonight, is uh, Casey Spinelli versus Laurel Van Ness versus Madison Rain. And we go to commercial and come back, and that match opens the show. So uh, this was a decent match. Not They didn't really give it too much time. I'd say about a little over five minutes was given. Um, not a whole lot was built in this storyline. You know, it was kind of just a quick tournament to crown a new champion. Um, but crowd didn't seem too much into this match, unfortunately. I mean, these were... You kind of figured that Laurel Van Ness was the favorite to win here, considering she is the one person who's been on the roster for a while. I mean, we haven't seen Madison Rain for probably six months about, and Casey Spinelli is new here. So uh, not to anybody's surprise, but Laurel Van Ness ends up getting the win after hitting the unprettier on Casey Spinelli. Um, so next week we will see the other triple threat match, which will be uh, Rosemary versus Allie versus Sienna, which is funny that they kind of stacked it in uh, one match, but that should be a good match next week. So right after that, we go into our second match, which was uh, Hakeem Zane, the uh, winner of Global Forge versus Ishimori. Uh, this was a good match. Both these guys seem to be seem to work well with each other. It was a pretty quick, fast uh, fast paced match, um, and we had a couple good spots. Um, Ishimori ended up getting the victory after hitting a, a 450 splash. And then after the match, uh, Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee came out and attacked Ishimori. Um, obviously, this was from what happened three weeks ago, I believe. Two or three weeks ago, um, when the three of them were in a triple threat match, and uh, they blamed Ishimori for uh, losing the match. Um then we go backstage, and McKenzie is interviewing James Storm, to which she... Talks about his match with Tejano later on tonight, and then he talks about how he hasn't forgotten about Dan Lambert and everything that happened between them, I believe, two weeks ago. So we go to LAX's hideout after this. Um, so I had a little problem with the segment, but I'll get to it after I get through talking about what it was about. So uh, they say they have big problems with uh, Sammy Callahan ever since he kind of stuck his nose in their business. And uh, Homicide's talking about what he's going to do to him. And then they kind of run down OVE and say that they're going to get their titles backed, back. Um, but my problem with this segment was that they played background music. I mean, I think they always do. But this time, it seemed like the volume was at the same level as Conan's voice. And you could barely hear anything that they said. So, aside from that, it was kind of your typical LAX... Uh, hideout segment uh so then we go to defy wrestling where sammy callahan is facing randy myers uh this seemed to be a pretty much heavily edited match uh, i think they started with uh sammy callahan throwing a bunch of chairs and match going outside and then inside and sammy callahan ends up getting the win with a clothesline similar to the clothesline from hell but not quite that it seemed to it's it's weird when they do these look-ins because they are filmed so much differently than Impact, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's just different from watching Impact and going to this. But nice to see them adding another organization to their list of global wrestling organizations. Um, I believe they mentioned. I think Josh Matthews said that they will also be adding Defy Wrestling matches onto the Global Wrestling Network. So we go back, and we get an Al Patron interview, and he calls Johnny Impact a little boy, 
and then he says that he's a man, and then he goes on about how the reason that people started watching Impact and they started buying tickets to the pay-per-view and so on and so forth is because of him, and that he's returned to Impact be- to destroy Johnny Impact. That's weird to say. Um, and then so at this point we pan over and we see KM beating somebody up alongside uh, a bit backstage, and uh, he starts yelling, uh, is this enough ATT? And, uh, and then he starts attacking other people. So I guess they're going to progress with this to uh, for for KM to try and join American Top Team. So it brings us to our next match, which was James Storm versus Tejano. So before the match, we uh, they both competitors come out to the ring. We go backstage, and KM is talking to American Top Team about asking them, did you see what I did? Did you see me beat those guys up? And American Top Team was like, or Dan Lambert was like, we just got here. We we literally just walked in the building. It was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, this match was decent between Tejano and Storm. Um, two guys, very similar builds. I think Josh Matthews kind of pointed that out. Um, but it was a pretty even match. Action spilled to the outside. Tejano took a sip of Storm's beer, spit it in his face. It went back and forth, go in the ring. Uh, Tejano hits a super kick, goes over to the turnbuckle, grab James Storm's hat, puts his hat on. He says, you know, I'm a real cowboy. Then Tejano turns around, and Storm hits him with the last call for the win. So after the match, Storm's walking back up the entranceway, and American Top Team come out, attack Storm, lay him out, bring him in the ring. Uh, the guy who, I forget his name, got attacked a couple weeks ago with the, the beer bottle over the head, says that he's the one that's going to attack Storm, and so while the attention's away, Storm hits him with a, a last call, American Top Team jump in the ring, all attack Storm, Moose comes out with a chair, clears the ring, or outside the ring, and Dan Lambert grabs the mic, and he compares Impact to a circus, and he kind of, you know just says enough's enough with this crap and so next week it's going to be moose and storm against lashley and american's top america's top team america american american top team's secret weapon dan lambert which all the members kind of look at him going what are you crazy so that that should be interesting so up next this was pretty funny we get a uh, Park Park and Park commercial, which is a spoof on one of those attorney commercials, and uh, it's featuring his cousin, Chandler Park, a.k.a. Ethan Page. So this was kind of his uh, debut, and uh, so their tagline in this commercial was, uh, a good attorney knows the law, but a better attorney knows the, the judge. So we go backstage, and uh, Mackenzie is interviewing Johnny Impact about his match against El Patron later on. And uh, he says that El Patron has uh, personal issues, but uh, his only problem is going to be me. And then he says he's going to take him to Slamtown. So a nice little jab there at El Patron. And then we go backstage and we see Eli Drake. And he says that he's going to be paying attention to the Impact and El Patron match because he's got a ticket for both of them that he's waiting to punch. And then he goes to leave and you see Jimmy Jacobs walk up. They kind of just glance at each other and then turn away. Go back to the ring where Matt Seidel is tasting on, taking on Tyson Dukes uh, with EC3 on commentary. EC3 was kind of just running down Matt Seidel throughout the whole match, basically saying that he always chokes and he kind of, you know, runs down everything that's happened in the last six months and how he's choked and hasn't take, capitalized on any of his chances. And uh, so this was a decent enough match. Um, Tyson Dukes was kind of doing the job here, unfortunately. Not really unfortunately, but you, you, you didn't expect him to go over Matt Seidel. Uh, Seidel c- controlled the majority of the match, and he ended up getting a, getting the win with the uh, shooting star press. And after the match, we learn that next week it'll be EC3 defending his grand championship against Matt Seidel. So this story progressed pretty quickly. Not too much interaction between the two of them besides the first week that something happened so a little weird but we'll see um it'd be interesting to see if 
Seidel could pick up this championship and then a feud builds. Um, but like I said, we will see what happens next week. So that brings us to the main event of Alberto El Patron versus Johnny Impact. So El Patron gets the upper hand in the match, kind of brings the action outside, starts throwing Johnny into the guardrail, into another guardrail, into a third guardrail, throws him in the ring, and he kind of controls the beat down. Go to commercial break, come back, and then they show what happened during the commercial, which apparently Johnny Impact was outside the ring, laying down, and the stairs were sideways stacked on top of him. El Patron was on the apron, jumped onto the um, steps, double stomped him, and then landed awkwardly on the steps, too. Um, Impact goes back in the ring. You can see he's obviously got a whole bunch of scratches and... And uh, just he just looked like a mess. But this was Patron kind of slowing the match down. He slowed it way down, which makes sense because he is the heel. And uh, that's kind of the heel tactics. And especially since Impact works pretty quick pace. So Impact was able to get some offense and he went up top. And I, I don't know what he was going for, but he was going to do some sort of flip onto... Um, El Patron, as he was laying on the ground, El Patron grabs the referee. Impact hits the referee. Impact stands back up. Referee's down. El Patron hits him with a low blow. He goes down. Then we get a look at the referee, and it looked like he had a nice shiner on his eye. I don't know if it was there before, but I don't think so. So at this point, um, Eli, uh, not Eli, El Patron has... Impact set up in like a trio well position in the corner. Eli comes out ringside. Him and El Patron start going back and forth. El Patron punches him and then takes the belt and hits Eli in the face with it. At this point, El Patron's going back into the ring and Impact kind of grabs him into the ring and then hits him with the uh, Starship Pain for the win. Uh, after the match, Adonis and Drake take turns beating up Johnny Impact. And Petey Williams comes out for the save. So that was how we closed the show. Like I said, it wasn't a bad show. Nothing too, too exciting going on. Um, like I said, a few storylines progressed. Not a fan of El Patron being back. I've made that abundantly clear. I, I don't know what their direction with him is going to be. I didn't get a chance to listen to the, uh, the conference call they had with him. And... Yeah, so next week we have lined up the um, second triple threat match for the Knockout Championship and the EC3 versus Matt Seidel for the Grand Championship. So that was my Impact Wrestling review. If you like what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.